Hello, this is Mr. Maximus Film, and today I'm doing an album review for Jethro Tull's 1971 album, Aqualung. Um, and Aqualung is really the point where Jethro Tull becomes very sophisticated lyrically and musically. Um, on their previous albums, they were, you know, were doodling with, you know, classical music, um, with beret, um, and more sort of philosophical lyrics, but this is sort of the peak where the music is just right, the lyrics are just right, um, just right. Jethro Tull is at its peak. Now, some things to address about this album. Um, I do not think it's a concept album per se. Um, one of the things that makes this, one of the famous points about this album is that Ian Anderson insists that it's not a concept album. It's not a concept album. It's not a concept album. I think there are reoccurring themes. It's particularly on the second half of the album entitled My God. Um, there's themes about how kind of pro-God but anti-religion. It's, it's, it's an interesting point of view. And there's reoccurring themes about religion and, you know, we're locking God in a golden cage, um, so to speak, is a line from the song, My God. Um, and the beginning sort of has a motif. Um, the beginning side of the album is called Aqualun. And the beginning um, sort of has this motif, a sort of nursery rhyme characters, you know, uh, Mother Goose, Aqualun, and uh, Cross-Eyed Mary. Um, and another like reoccurring pattern in this album, it's intensively riff heavy. There's a lot of really cool riffs here, like of course Aqualung, which has that very distinctive opening riff, um, and that opening section which is very hard rock and very driving. And then it kind of goes into the middle with a little folk part. Um, and up to me also has a really cool driving um, guitar riff through it, and some really cool blues licks going on there from the guitarist of Jethro Tall, whose name escapes me right now. Um, and what um, Ian Anderson does, though, is with these hard rock elements, he interjects folk into it. Um, there's a lot of little, very short folk pieces, particularly on the first side of the album, that really feel unfinished if you're not listening to them with the entire album. If you're listening to them and correspondence to the rest of the tracks, they flow very well. The flow of the album is very good with those uh, little interludes. Um, like, for example, um, Wandering Around, Cheap Day Return. They're just Ian Anderson and his acoustic guitar, very intimate, very at your face, um, compared to the blues riffs that you see before. Um... That really, dis for me, describes the first half of the album. The second half of the album begins with this really progressive song called My God. The other songs on this album, for for me, aren't really progressive. They're sort of hard rock and folk. But when it gets to My God, that is truly a progressive song. really shows um, off their sort of technical mastery at this point in Jethro Tull. Um, it, it starts out with this very... You know, it, this acoustic-driven ballad with um, piano, um, talking about how um, religion locks God up in a golden cage and doesn't really present God to all his potential. Um, very deep themes, and um, you know, it has piano, and uh, it, it sort of get and then one verse, the guitar comes in and it sort of slams you in the face, and it's you know, doing a guitar riff in the background. And then eventually it gets into a section where you can hear, uh, you know, church choir vocals in the background, and which is pretty cool. And he just goes, Ian Anderson goes insane on the flute. He shows off his chops on the flute, which is pretty awesome. Um, and uh, it sort of ends like it began. So that's a really cool song, a really progressive, multi-part, you know, that's a progressive song. Um, it gets into Hymn 42, which is a hard rock song, just, um, uh, Ian Anderson singing very soulfully, but very harshly, and, you know, at your face, um, also with the themes about God. And then, uh, it ends with another acoustic piece, which the title escapes me right now, pardon me, um,
slipstream, which just sums up the points that he was trying to say before about the God um, and religion restraining the concept of God. And um, then it kind of goes into an unrelated song, Locomotive Breath, which gets into this really, it starts out with this very virtuoso um, piano solo, and then it gets into this sort of really cool groove with, you know, this hard-driving guitar. Really nice groove. The bass is just sort of pumping. Ian Anderson is just, you know, in his element. It's it's a really awesome song. I, I wish it would go on for longer, but, you know, some, some of the best songs, you know, seem to, you know, end too soon. And that ends with, uh, pardon me, uh, wind up, and uh, which is basically sort of it's a, sort of a f philosophical song, just a, sort of a retrospective of the entire album. Uh, very you know laid back compared to the rest of the intense songs. Sort of it just seems very summarizing of the entire thing. Um, it, it's a good it's it, it, for me it goes on to a bit long, um, but it, it's a good summary. Um. So overall, this album has many different musical themes and lyrical themes that don't make it, in my opinion, a concept album. It makes it sort of a thematic album, I guess I would describe this. Um, you know, you got the beginning with the little interjections of folk and, you know, the nursery rhymes, Mother Goose, Aqualun, Cross-Eyed Mary. Um, Aqualun is about a homeless man, who uh, a pedophilic homeless man, who, you know, sitting on the park bench, eyeing little girls with bad intent. Um, and Cross-Eyed Mary is talking about a schoolgirl, um, schoolgirl, ah, sorry, schoolgirl prostitute that would rather spend time with people like Aqualun than the little boys in the playground. So sort of very sick, twisted sort of stories going on at the beginning, which I find very entertaining. Um, so that's, and then the second part of the album kind of takes a more serious turn with the sort of the themes of God. So, not a concept album, but leaning towards it. Um, like I said, uh, sort of a combination of folk and hard rock. Not necessarily progressive. Um, the only song I would really on here call progressive rock is um, My God. But of course, everybody at the time pr uh, labeled Jethro Tull as a prog band. So, with Thick as a Brick, they sort of said, you know what, fine, we'll be a prog band. And they sort of made fun of progressive rock with that album. So, um, going into the packaging, you got the iconic cover with the creepy man, who I assume is Aqualun, sort of staring in the distance. It's sort of this uh, old English script saying Jethro Tull Aqualun. Aqualun, rather. Another picture of an old man. And the uh, first side Aqualun, second side my god. Uh, pardon me. Inside, you got the disc here. Oh, there's a remastered version that recently came out for the 40th, 40th anniversary. This isn't it. This is the old version, which for me is a bit quiet. Um, I hope they fix that with the remaster, but this version is a bit quiet. You need to turn up the volume. Um, Jethro Tull Aqualun. You got the book here with the same portrait of an old man. Uh, sorry again. It's hard to get these things out sometimes, you know? You know? Okay. <laughs> All right, I'm back. Okay, you got the front. It's kind of a plain booklet, not the most uh, exciting thing. The lyrics are printed there. Uh, very good lyrics, um, some reviews of it. And I think this is the original gatefold sleeve. And uh, by locomotive breath, I think there is a picture of Jethro Tall. Um, so, very solid album overall. I really enjoy it. It's a very enjoyable listen to me. Um, despite its very deep themes, um, I get um, a lot of enjoyment listening to this. Uh, I would definitely give this a 9 out of 10. Very sophisticated Jethro Tall, which they, before this, they weren't considered a very sophisticated band. After this, they became a very cohesive lineup. Very good album. So, this is Mr. Maxim's film. Uh, I'm definitely doing a review of In Rainbows by Radiohead next, because um, I noticed a lot of people... Notice that I said I was going to do that, but I never did, but I am going to do that. And um, there you go. This is Jethro Tull's Aqualon.